This is Gary Thompson from FX Open UK. And it's our weekly video, taking a look back at the main stories that have impacted the markets and sparked some interest for traders over the last few days. Now, we're going to start today with an oil price bonanza, potentially. Oil, obviously, hits home pretty hard for everybody. If it's the fuel in your car through to manufacturing, it has an impact on our daily lives. And what we are really seeing at the moment is an incessant increase in the oil prices, which pretty much appeared inconceivable last year. It was then just recovering, was very low from the negative equity position of March 2020. Those seem like long gone halcyon days now. And this again is all with a backdrop of strength in the US dollar. Brent crude on July 25th at $103 per barrel. Now, with these sort of prices, somebody's got to be doing well out of it. And it's quite clear the oil companies are absolutely raking it in, in terms of profits at the moment. We're also seeing, obviously, the issues with Russia and Russian supply. Their settlement now obviously has to be in rubles, um, which is sort of untwined slightly the reliance on the US dollar for commodities traders, but also adding in additional layers of complexity for them. Now, what a number of analysts are saying at the moment is with these sort of levels of oil prices, we're looking to see an increase in the share buyback schemes from some of the major petroleum companies, and certainly we're expecting to see an increase in dividends. There are some huge margins for oil companies currently, especially within their refinery divisions. If we look at ExxonMobil, for example, over in the States and its SEC filing from early July, it's set to add somewhere between 4.4 and 4.6 billion dollars to its Q2 results. That's a pretty chunky increase. Shell, who obviously have recently moved their headquarters from Holland over to London to be part of the global center of financial markets, allegedly, has seen their refining margin triple in Q2. And that's expecting them to add somewhere between 800 million and 1.2 billion dollars to their Q2 results. So as many of us are struggling and finding it difficult to fill cars, certainly the oil companies seem to be doing very well off the back of it. Okay, for our second story, we're going to stick with some commodities and we're going to look at the natural gas price. Um, Joe Biden, in fact, when I mentioned this just a few weeks ago in the video, claimed that he was expecting to see the price of natural gas come down and that there were clear indications in the market that that's what was going to happen. Well, NYMEX natural gas futures are approaching the psychological level of $9 per contract. Now, that would see a sort of a 60% increase in the price of natural gas in less than a month. So, not really what Biden was expecting, I would say. We're looking at year high of around the $9.60 per contract. Now, we would think perhaps some of these prices would come down. Russian gas is back, is being supplied again after the repairs have made to the pipeline. However, it's been shown that whilst those repairs have been done and the flow of gas has been switched back on, they're only running at about a third of previous capacity. Now, when we saw and talked about buying activity previously around the $6 mark and then at the $7 mark, there was certainly some interest there that seemed to be keeping the market buoyant. Will that pattern repeat itself though, as usual, if we hit $9? Now, under normal conditions, you think trading demand would fall and we perhaps would be looking for a correction in the market at a price as high as $9 per contract. However, these are unusual times with everything going on in the world. So nobody's quite clear what's going to happen there. Will the price continue to rise or will we see some form of correction? Something to keep your eyes on. Okay, for our third story, we're going to turn away from the commodities markets and hit the equity markets, and in particular, Tesla. Now, what you might call a volatile week. It's fallen to around $804 per share after its previous week's rally, which saw it up around the 840-845 mark. Why? Why has it come off? Well, some results have come out, but most importantly, we've got to look at the positioning of Elon Musk, the founder, and Tesla itself as Bitcoin whales. Now, a Bitcoin whale is basically somebody who holds enough Bitcoin to influence the market. And it's fair to say that Musk and Tesla can do that. Now, it, they're so important, some people would say, that last year they crashed the value of five major crypto pairs by $700 million. I think that's what we call influence. So the company's doing quite well. It's a disruptive company. We know that. We've seen what it's been doing in the automotive markets, making companies such as Ford, you know, 100-year-old established companies, change their outlook for the way that they need to do things. But the company said in its SEC filing that it made 64 million US dollars in gains from Bitcoin sales. And we're seeing the price come off. 
that normally would be seen as you know another string to their bow, another profitable stream for them. But does that suggest that some investors are not keen on crypto fueled gains? So we're now looking at Tesla as a disruption in the automotive industry and sector, and also in the crypto sector. Now foresight, innovation, and disruption clearly equal volatility at this time. What's going to happen with Tesla moving forwards? Lots of people have lots of interest in this stock. There are polar opposites in views. Take a look at it for yourself. Finally, our last little look back for the week. We're going to take a look at Euro against the US dollar and Euro against the Japanese yen and its attempt to ride a recovery wave. Some key points just take from these two currencies or currency pairs, I should say, over the last few days. Euro dollar started a major decline from 102.50 and 102.80 resistance levels. That's happening just this morning. Um, possible short-term contracting triangle forming around the resistance of 101.45 on the hourly charts. Something to keep your eyes on. Is it going to carry on pushing forwards? Who knows, but certainly lending a little bit of credence into the recovery of the euro. That then twinned with the euro yen. We're also starting to see a major decline between 140 and 139.50 support levels. Again, happening just earlier on today. And there we can see a bearish trend line with resistance of near 139.20 on the hourly chart. Is this going to continue? Are we going to have to look at the news coming out over the next few days? But certainly seems a little bit more optimism about the euro in the coming days. That's it for this week. I hope you found some of that useful. Keep your eyes on the markets next week and enjoy your trading. Good luck.